Welcome to Russia and Rybinsk for our review of the women's 10 kilometer freestyle race. A little earlier today, Mike Dixon alongside myself, David Goldstrom, as Steffi Berler from Germany gets underway here. This 33 year old who had her best ever result here back in 2009 when she was on the podium. The only time she's been on a podium in the World Cup race. Well, Mike, uh, the trail here is pretty tough. David, uh, coupled with uh, the profile being tough over this five kilometer track twice, it's snowing, it's minus 12, minus 16 here. So it doesn't come much more difficult than this for these best cross country skiers. And the climbs are steep and there's no respite. No respite at all. As soon as you, this is the only easy section as you leave the start and then you're straight into this massive roller coaster on the side of the Volga. Well, through the first five kilometers of the race, the dominant force so far has been Norway's Astrid Jakobsen. And even though Norway are without uh, Marit Björgen, Theresa Johauk, Heidi Veng, uh, even uh, Ingvild Ersberg, uh, what uh, you have is Jakobsen leading for Norway and underlining the strength. As Elizabeth Stephen of the United States has had a terrific uh, performance in the Tour de Ski, Mike. Well, she did. Fifth overall, and uh, especially, David, when it comes to climbing, uh, Stephen is outstanding. She was fourth fastest up the final climb on the Tour de Ski. Well, here's uh, Astrid Jakobsen, whose own career has been something of a roller coaster. Didn't have the best early season training, and she said it's taken a while to get to grips with things, but a, a promising result just recently in an FIS race. That's right, Ed. On the final weekend of the Tour de Ski, she did very well up there. So, uh, picking up the action now at... Uh, 6.9 kilometers and uh, into the finish comes uh, number 16 this is Rita Lisa Ropponen who uh, has only had one World Cup race this season she was seventh at altitude over today's distance and in freestyle and uh, coming in to set the target time Rita Lisa this is her perfect distance 10 kilometers freestyle and this surely might must be a, a bid to try and get selection for the upcoming worlds I think so I think the Finnish team they need uh, the strength of Ropen and the experience of Ropen and maybe a little uh, well aging now but her skill set her performances are always reliable so uh, picking up the action now here in uh, picture Martin Eck Hagen. Now, Martine uh, started uh, pretty brightly through the first couple of kilometers. She was only four seconds down on uh, Jakobsen, although that uh, tended to extend. 34, you can see uh, right behind her, that's uh, Claudia Neustadt, who was in trouble recently. Well, that's right, day, day four, I think it was, of the two to ski. She had, didn't get an answer of exactly what it was, but yes, an injury, and she would had to pull out of the two to ski. Hagen, who was the under-23 skiathlon champion last year and also won the 10-kilometer classic title. So uh, an up-and-coming uh, Norwegian athlete, but uh, has the problem of uh, trying to uh, outspeed so many good Norwegians. Uh, Rosie Brennan here for the United States. A bright start for her up the first two kilometers. She was uh, actually only five, six seconds behind Jakobsen. It's now, a, it's struggling a, a little bit more I now. I was going to say, David, look at the snow falling, and you can hear how, how aggressive the snow crystals are. If you start too hard on this course, you're punished later. Look at the steepness of this climb. 22% climb this one for 500 meters. And boy, it's a chilly day. You can see most of the women have really wrapped up warm here. As uh, we go uh, back to the finish for Armonier of uh, France. Coming in to challenge uh, Robinson for the lead here. And this is a decent run. But I guess, Mike, uh, we all have to take into account the athletes who are, you know, not with us today. And uh, Justina Kowalczyk was the last to uh, start. Kowalczyk, who seems to be really struggling, but for that very good result with... Uh, Jaskiewicz, her Polish teammate, last week in the team sprint. I think that was very promising for Kowalczyk. She hasn't had her strongest season. She, she was competitive in the Tour de Ski, but her freestyle skiing has let her down. 
And I must say earlier on the start line, she looked absolutely frozen uh, going into her start. So not sure how that's going to pan out for her. Well, here's the woman who started the day as the bookies' uh, favourite, uh, Chekalaiva for uh, Russia. She was at the halfway stage, some 22 seconds behind Jakobsen, and uh, was losing time steadily throughout the first half of the race. This is a 5,200-meter loop that they're on, which they do basically twice. And Steffi Berla coming up here. Steffi Berla now with uh, more momentum. And uh, this is pretty good here because this is 6.9 kilometers. And I can tell you, Steffi Berla was 17 seconds down at five kilometers. That's behind Jakobsen, who's yet to reach this point, and about six seconds behind Elizabeth Stephen of the United States. So the race is really taking shape now. Jakobsen. Steven, Berla, they're very much in there. Styra also in with a chance of the podium. So uh, in the uh, current leaders uh, box there, uh, Monier and uh, up the hill and now this is Elizabeth Stephen and look at the pace that she's putting in here this is really impressive at this course David uh, Stephen her climbing we saw that throughout the tour de ski and her performances when it comes to a, a very steep hilly course she seems to be there or thereabouts and on that big nasty climb the last leg I think she was fourth best uh, up. She was, yeah. You, Therese Johaug, the fastest, Heidi Veng, second fastest, Deb Jürgen, third, and then right behind them, it was this lady. Well, that's interesting. 15 seconds ahead of Steffi uh, Berla. Now, that really is impressive there from uh, Stevens, because if I look back, uh, Steven and Berla were only separated by six seconds at five kilometers. And here comes Jakobsen, who basically, Mike, has led all the way a 10-second advantage. Now, that's come down by four seconds in the last 1.9 kilometers. That's interesting, and I think that's maybe an indication of uh, Steven on the steep climbs. She just really destroys the rest of the field, but then seems to lose a little bit of time on the descent. So Jakobsen uh, still very much in the lead. Uh, Steira, who also had a late draw unseeded, started after Elizabeth Stephen. And at five kilometers, uh, Steira was about 12 seconds down on Jakobsen and only a second or so uh, behind uh, Stephen. So interesting to watch her progress. 25 uh, coming in there. That's. Uh, uh, Natalia Ilina of uh, Russia. Just thinking, David, how those the fans here in this freezing cold conditions would love to see a Russian on the podium today. So Styra at five kilometers was 13 seconds down on Jakobsen. So this is the woman who really has uh, run up so many fourth place finishes in uh, big events. Last big victory in the World Cup for her was the year before the Sochi Olympics, 21 seconds. So Jakobsen has really picked up the pace, but so has Elizabeth Stephen, perhaps arguably a little bit more. Yeah, Styra, who won the Sochi Skiathlon, that was one of her three wins and the last time she stood on the top step of the podium. Chekalaiva with 1,500 metres or so to uh, go here. As I said, the bookies made her the, well, 13 to 5 favourite to win today's race. You can see the longer stride here. I'm not sure it's ideal in these very aggressive snow conditions. Longer ski poles, longer stride compared to the short, sharp tempo from the Norwegians. 30 years of age and a couple of second place finishes in the World Cup. And that's, as you can see, the Norwegian who was leading to this point, Martin Ek Hagen. It's a steady pace, but there's not a lot of tempo left there. And 12.1 seconds, she has the lead. But of course, Chekalaiva wearing bib 40, Berla has 42, Steven has 44, and they all have the advantage of getting the splits on her. Well, that's, that's absolutely, and Ileana, there, you could see her there realizing that uh, she was going to be surpassed. 
Kowalczyk. Well, this is sad uh, to see Kowalczyk. And at the moment, if you look at the positions here, uh, well. you know, she's chasing 22nd place now. Oh, she's struggling. Look at the body movement there, David. Rotation through the hip, the shoulders uh, rotating so, so much. Uh, she's fighting hard as always, but the technique isn't supporting that fight. So coming home, another of the uh, Russians, Tani Gina, or Tani Gina, I should say, and uh, the Russians obviously giving maximum support. Just a reflection on uh, Kowalczyk. I mean, Kowalczyk's won 30 World Cup races. The best she's been so far this season was fourth in Kusamo. You remember in the 10 Classic, right at the beginning of the season. But she's ranked ninth in the World Cup rankings, and she doesn't even look anywhere near reaching a podium. She could actually be maybe going to finish outside the top 30. Who knows? Well, that would be that would be one of her worst. And it's like the Russian national champs here with 17 Russians in a field of only 48. So a lot of the big names not here. And I think you're right. She's not going to finish in the top 25, maybe even outside the top 30. So in picture here, this is Astrid Jakobsen. Um, we're talking about a roller coaster career. I mean, if you think back to uh, all her trials and tribulations, but 2009, that awful mountain bike crash. She's had a lot of setbacks, yes, her, her facial injuries, her elbows, uh, serious bike accidents, but she came back strong after that. And she's looking very strong today. 7.9 there at uh, 8.5. Now that represents a gain for Elizabeth Stevens of 2.1 seconds over what the last 1600 meters. So again, Elizabeth Steven on these uh, late climbs, just biting into the time. But uh, it just depends how much uh, both of them have got left in the tank. 36 uh, coming home here. This is Martin Hagen. And uh, to clearly take the lead away from the Russian Tanigina. And 11.8 seconds. I think for uh, Martin, as I said, under 23 world champion in two categories last year. And uh, uh, yet another rising Norwegian force. And just look how Welsh wrapped up she is. Well, you need the, the facial tape there uh, because the cold wind chill factor here and minus well, the air minus 16 now. So it really is a, a tough day for the racing. What about Styra? I mean, we always think of her as a great big occasion racer. She's 33 now. Has she still got what it takes, do you think, Mike? I think she has. I think she needs some more racing. She did race up in the FIS Cup uh, recently in Falun and she performed very well up in the top five. But now look at this, for a podium, she's uh, looking safe at the moment, but some bigger names coming through after her. She'll, yeah. be, she'll be pushing it to get on the podium today, I think, uh, Steyra. Yeah, she's not made the podium. She was fourth in Davos at altitude over 15 kilometers uh, freestyle. That's her best result. Uh, oh, sorry, that was really last year. She hasn't really got any results from this year. But Czech Alive uh, coming home now. Czech Alive, uh, who... Uh, is certainly uh, faster than uh, Hagen and uh, getting a good cheer, decent crowd out from the Russians. I have seen more spectators, but maybe one or two of them deterred by the chilly conditions, but races through there, 24 seconds, but we've got to keep that into uh, context because at 6.9 kilometers, she was 27 seconds down on uh, Jakobsen and 17 down on Steven. And even, you know, six down on Styra. Well, she can't uh, give much more. She's given everything there. I did wonder, in these shorter races, a stretch for the line is always a, a, a good move to make as an athlete. Steffi Bola. And Steffi Bola has really uh, improved as the race has gone on here. And again, we saw at uh, 6.9 kilometers, she was 25 kilometers. She was only a couple of seconds ahead of Czech Aliba. But look at this. I mean, it is a shrinking margin, but she's going to take the lead away from the Russian, that's for sure. And I think there's only a couple of real dangers out here. So a chance for Berla to do what she did, Mike. Oh, what? Takes the lead and <laughs> Berla. Third in Rebinz back in 2009. 
exactly over today's distance and freestyle skating. Well, she's going to feel good for that. And I love the way that she extended. She pushed that leg forward across the line. And 1.2 seconds ahead of Shikolaeva. Will that be vital for the, the podium for the Russian? So Elizabeth Stephen here who's been trying and successfully eating into Jakobsen's advantage, but Jakobsen coming after her has the advantage of the splits. 22 seconds goes into first place. Now, by my reckoning, Mike, uh, only Jakobsen can take this away, and here is Jakobsen from uh, Steven, and Jakobsen, who uh, hasn't won since December, since February 2008, gets her fourth career victory. And there's something coincidental here. Berla's just got her best results since she podiumed here in Ribinsk. And it was here that Astrid Jakobsen in 2007 won her first ever World Cup race, 15 kilometers freestyle. And the last victory she had was in 2008 in Falun. I just wonder whether coincidence is going to come into play here. Well, I, I know the selections haven't been confirmed yet for the Norwegians, but when you look at her performance recently in Falun, 18 seconds of Kala, who won the race, the FIS race, and uh, this lady was third place, and that's on the World Championships tracks. And Elizabeth Stephen for the United States, not only a personal best, but the best ever World Cup result for a female American athlete in a distance race. And there it is. And she continues the good work from the Tour de Ski. So Jakobsen, a fourth career win, very timely with the Norwegian Championships next week for selection. Elizabeth Stephen, brilliant in second. Berla equaling her personal best. And when you look down, Chekholiva fourth and Styra fifth. Uh, Hagen, a decent six there. And and then the Russians come in, the best of them, uh, Tanigina in uh, seventh place, a new generation. And, oh, Kowalczyk. Well, Kowalczyk, 244, David, 36, outside the points. Uh, that is a real, that, that's the worst uh, ever performance, sadly, for Kowalczyk that uh, I think we've ever seen. Uh, just going back to the top 10, Celia Armonier for France, the best for her country in ninth place. Rita Lisa Ropponen, who started very positively, uh, just lost time towards the end in 10th place. But uh, a real comeback here for Astrid Jakobsen and very timely Elizabeth Stevens. Well, maybe she's won for the shortlist for the World Championships. Well, when you look at the fight here from Elizabeth Stephen, the uphill climbing is perfect. And the World Championships course in Falun, some very steep climbs there. And in these distances, 10 kilometers freestyle for the women, 15 for the men. But Astrid Jakobsen, uh, I mean, a former world champion and junior world champion at sprints. We always thought that maybe classic was her forte, but she really is now very much the all-round athlete. Uh, an excellent day for her. Hope you enjoyed it.